All right, do we have quorum here? Um, Josh, I think you were up first. Sure, um, I won't take up too much time today. Um, but basically, uh, the main thing I want to talk about is the RC, um, the RC2 for distribution spec. We had targeted early November, and it is now uh, early to mid December. And there is um, basically a number of issues that are coming up sort of at the final hour, which I don't see anything wrong with. But um, I think I'm wondering if some of these things can be postponed. Um, for a subsequent release. I know some there's some strong feelings on certain things, um, but some of them, I think we do need a little bit of help in the form of uh, pool requests. Um, I, I just opened number, the latest one, number um, 218 to try to open up a pathway to solve the accept header content negotiation stuff. Basically, I created a new document called content negotiation um, that maybe, you know, um, Sebastian or, or John could take a pass at and then added back the language about accept headers from uh, the spec that I pulled up from last year. Um, and then I also reached out to the maintainers to see if maybe next week um, we can do like just a long sit down and just kind of uh, release the next RC because it's sort of in a holding pattern. Um, and then the link that I have on there is uh, the milestone where I'm adding issues that I think should be resolved prior to that release. So if you, um, don't see your issue in there and you feel very strongly, please make a note or shout now. Um, is there any, any comments on that before I move on? Uh, most of my strong feelings are around the content negotiation stuff and I would love to talk to Justin Cormack and I think it's on the agenda if we have time. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's let's have that conversation. Um, maybe after everything is that, or I guess you have an item, John. Yeah, it's the last one. I, you know, if we have time, it's fine. Otherwise, we can go to GitHub issues or something. Okay, um, and I'm happy to meet with, you know, just the two of you whenever you have the time as well. Um, uh, the next one I had was um, really simple, but you know. Um, in trying to, you know, be more mindful of words and language, um, changing the name of the branch, which GitHub is now doing, I think by default, uh, from master to main. And I don't see any issue with it. I've had issues. I tried this on a few other places and it's, it will auto close PRs. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone's strongly opposed to this, it, it could just mean some people have to reopen PRs. So that uh, has been a hassle. We, we did that in a bunch of places. I don't, I thought the GitHub folks were doing something to fix that so it doesn't auto close. I don't know if anybody else has followed, has had any conversations with them to know if that's in the works because it'll be, it certainly would be nice if we didn't have that. Yeah, um, maybe what we do is we wait until we get 1.0 out and then make the switch. So it's not affecting PRs that are open for that. But I've had it both ways. Like I've had it where the PRs auto update to main and then the other ones, other ones that just don't. I think it has to do with how they were put together. Um, Does anybody know? I could reach, I could find the person and reach out. I just. I don't know if anybody's already knows what they're thinking, what they're planning there. Like, is there some, I thought they were doing a feature that you'll be able to change the branch and it doesn't lose, it doesn't auto-close, it will just transfer over to the other branch. 
but I could be underestimating what that really means. I was going to try it this week on, uh, you know, a dummy repo, but Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll ping some folks and see if I can get an answer. And if not, just do what you're suggesting. Just try, it, it is annoying when you have to reopen and find the right person. Yeah, like there's there's only a few, like there's one from Vincent and Derek that are sort of older that I fear will be dropped and never reopened. Um, Did you just call Derek and Vincent old? <laughs> excuse me. No, I. their PRs are older than the other ones. Um, all right, ne next, next, next topic. Um, so we have uh, Peter this week opened up a pool request number 217. So there was an issue with the conformance tests where um, the version of the test that you're running is not apparent. So for example, you could not lock down um, when you create the HTML report for your registry, there's a field for version and it's always saying unknown if you're using the GitHub action. Um, and the reason for that is that it was running it from source and GitHub had a gap where you could not build, you could not build a Docker file with build arguments. So we basically opened up a GitHub action for distribution spec upon push to master slash main or release that will actually publish a container image with the conformance tests to GitHub's registry. Um, so it's not, it's not something, there, there's been a few issues about it. It's not something we've talked about using this specific registry, but considering that it's for the GitHub action. I think it makes sense. Um, the question then becomes, I don't know if we have someone with experience using uh, GitHub registry, but like whose token is used to push that? Do we need to create a bot account, like a service account that is a member of the organization but doesn't have right access to the repo? Um, I just don't know if anyone has experience with that. It seems like you need to have an actual user personal token. Yes, you need a PAX and you can give the PAX access to just have access to the registry. Okay, so basically make distribution spec bot or OCI bot, create a personal token. I'm not sure who was talking, it didn't light up, but. Sorry, it's Brian. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah, that's um, pretty much it. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a there's a permission just for the registry. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, all right, uh, I if there's nothing more to talk about, like generally about distribution spec or version one zero, I'll give the floor to Justin. Okay, I had one quick announcement before this. I forgot to put on the thing, which is that we're in the process of donating Docker distribution, which is the registry reference implementation and uh, to CNCF. And this will happen uh, in January, but um, I will be submitted shortly. Um, so I'm gonna submit it through the sandbox process and the incubation process at the same time. If anyone's interested in being a maintainer, uh, ping me. We've appoint, I've appointed like eight maintainers um, from GitHub, GitLab, DigitalOcean, um, Docker, everyone, basically everyone who's using it in production. Um, um, yeah, so Z standard, um, we, it's really the spec that's been agreed is, very problematic to actually use in a way that's compatible with any kind of old client because basically the only 
workflow that seems to work is that you just use Z standard instead of normal compression and there's no way for an old client to be able to use it, a, a new image at all. And that's really problematic for use cases like us where we distribute public content for anyone to use. And some of the clients using it are very old and basically means that we, it's basically unusable, which is problematic because we would really like to use Z standard because it gives you 50% greater compression, which would save lots of money and be great, but there's simply no way of doing it with the spec as written. And we really want proper like negotiation of what the client can do, like with architecture and just negotiate the client can accept a, um, you know, Z standard image rather than a G zipped image. And, but instead it's been put in as being a different layer type and the client can pick the layers it understands which doesn't mean anything in terms of layers um, because layers are for a start supposed to be an ordered list and like and, and a modern client would understand all kinds of layers so that doesn't make any sense so I just don't think this bag which apparently hasn't officially been approved is suitable at all for any kind of backwards compatible use cases And I'd really like it to be part of a manifest list where you could just select the one that you can actually understand because it's a, for, for reasons that do make some sense, but uh, um, compression is just not a negotiable thing because of content addressing and because of recompressing is too expensive to do at the registry. Um, so fundamentally it's just a different type of, as it basically has to be a different image that you either can or can't understand. I, I, we, there's a bit of conversation, obviously we've talked about this online. It, 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 it seems like it's just intermixed right now. I mean, things that we just want to support a different version and a newer one would know how to do down level, but you know, older ones need to know it's not what it expects. And that's okay. Like if I have a Windows machine and I'm trying to pull an image that's only Linux, it, the tag it doesn't know until it pulls and goes, oh, not for me. And that's fine. But it seems like right now, and, and we went through this with, uh, sorry, with artifacts of just how much can you stuff into the existing manifest? And it just seems we need to get some more definitive information so clients can know what they are and aren't pulling. Whether it actually fits in the manifest, I hadn't gone that far with thoughts, but manifest list rather. Um, but it seems right now. I mean, the manifest list, unfortunately, was designed in a kind. I mean, is the is the right place logically for it? Unfortunately, the design of it isn't very extensible, which is makes it difficult to just put new things in it, which is really unfortunate. But it's logically the manifest list seems exactly the right place. There's an image for Linux if you understand GZIP, which everyone does, and there's a whole you know, by default, and then there's one for, if you understand Z standard, and then we can put them both in, and then the clients can all pull the nice, fast Z standard ones if they're new, and the old ones if they're not, and that seems perfect. Yeah, the issue I see with that is not being able to actually take advantage of the storage space, right? Because uh, the storage savings, because like you're gonna end up needing to have both the GZIP version and the Z standard version. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I mean, there's, there's fundamentally, like, if you care about storage space, you'll just, you have to use GZIP because you only want one of them. But for example, for, uh, for official images, we, bandwidth is the cost that matters for us. And so we think we would have both. And then we'd hope that new clients would download the nice small ones and it would save us lots of bandwidth costs. And we wouldn't, we would eat the storage costs because the difference is enormous so we're not oh, sorry but, but otherwise i mean like if people know if people know all their clients are new then they can switch permanently and like in some years everyone can do that potentially yeah. but right now there's just we just simply can't use them at all because it'll just break all old clients I and mean, it basically means it's useless yep well, we generally don't see customers concerned about their storage costs per se it's the bigger problem is they have stuff stored that they don't know how to, they don't know if they can delete because they don't know whether they're referencing or not. So for them, it's cheap to keep it and not worry about it. 
Um, so I, for the customers that do need both, it doesn't seem to be a problem. The problem is they can't negotiate which one they get. I think the manifest list is the right way to do it. Has there been any testing to make sure that like if you have to say um, x86 images, um, same architecture, just the one happens to come after that has the standard that any 1.0 client will support that correctly? Or I, I don't even know if we have a yeah, defined unfortunately. Resolution. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sure that this was really thought of when the manifest list was created because it doesn't have kind of extensible keys. Even it's as far as I remember, it's only got the architecture things. So I, right now, I don't think there's. I think that's a, that makes it it's problem even more difficult. Well, there's, well, there's no has simple it. keys, but the ordering should be handled deterministically. Well, there, uh, I guess maybe I don't know what you're talking about about the manifest list, but if it's just a list of like manifest objects, like the way it's tagged in an image is the, uh, it's, it's like a map of keys to values. And my understanding is you can put whatever keys in there you want, right? So isn't that extensible or? I think that is extensible today. Um, I think the problem is the clients don't have a way to like programmatically oh, say this agreed. is this is the rules for how you should resolve this. It's just platform, and that's pretty much it. And I'm not even sure how well that's defined today in the manifest list and index. Um, I know the at least for like the Docker and Containerd clients, the ordering it handles them deterministically. So as soon as it as soon as it finds a good match, it's going to use that. So if, if you had a key in there, like for say this image is Z standard and, um, or how do you say it? Z standard? Is that, is that the proper pronunciation, Justin? Sorry, that's just me being British. That's British. Okay, okay. Thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I believe that a Docker and Containerd client at least should handle that correctly. If you had two images with the same platform, um, the second one just had us uh, an extra uh, annotation uh, that it would resolve that correctly. But I, th I think that's that's what would need to be defined in the spec because yeah, yeah in order for it to be a 1.1, .1, it has to be compatible. Like 1.0 clients need to be compatible, I think. So there was another trick that we did in Quay when we were supporting both like Rocket and Docker back in the day, um, which was basically if you tried to request one like if you tried to request an Aki image and it was uploaded as a Docker image, we would basically transcode it on the fly the first time. And we would stream it to the customer at the same time we'd be uploading it to S3 in our permanent storage. And then any subsequent pulls would be cached from that transcode. So it's basically on-demand transcoding. And we just basically implemented the routes for it. So we like you could theoretically do this in the worst case scenario where you know that the legacy clients are not going to trust any changes to the manifest list, but instead, like you could look at accept headers or even version headers on your server and basically serve legacy images and transcode them on the fly and cache them. It's very expensive. We, me and Derek looked at the kind of cost of Z standard decode and re encode, and it's pretty expensive. It also gets confusing when we start doing notary and signing things. Yeah. I got to, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about with teleport is I'm the, very reluctant to kind of require that registries do any work at all because the whole point is they should be as scalable as possible for shipping <laughs> bits out and that's their kind of function I think I mean as a, as I said in the kind of content negotiation discussion I don't I, I don't think we should we should be requiring any work to be done on Connect either so one of things I'm the, hearing is the this is one of the way the clients are aware of the new standard Z or otherwise, um, and we but we don't want to break the existing stuff out that it doesn't know. So wouldn't this be something we could do a versioning on index that adds this other stuff, and then the client that makes a request basically says I don't know how to support this thing, so it fails, but new ones would be able to get it. 
when we talked about this one, we we're talking about adding config to index that we want to be able to, to rev it to not break existing clients. Or is the problem existing clients don't even know to check for our version? Yeah, existing clients don't know how to check for a version, I think is correct. I always love this. Everybody, always, nobody ever wants to put the version number in the first release because there, there won't be a problem. Well, but also, what do you, what's, what's the client supposed to do if it doesn't? And what is it? Yeah. What's the client supposed to do if it sees V2? Just fail. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, excuse it, me, can you upgrade me? I mean, that's, fail, that's, the, that's the problem is if it doesn't know it, that it's a failure and it starts and it starts trying and it gets some weird error back, is the problem. People think it's so, authentication or something. So, one of the things I've been thinking about is how to have an alternative represent, how to present an alternative representation of the image. And I think the Z standard argument kind of works with that. Um, I've been thinking about some other things like how can we distribute like a flattened image um, as you know chopped up bits or whatever um, and how like how does that fit into the spec and unfortunately it just doesn't work out very well outside of sidelining it in headers or something like that saying oh this person sent me a header saying they could accept this super cool format that I'm testing um, it, it would be interesting to be able to shove that into uh, the manifest list, though. Anyway, it seems like I mean, similar. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot more of these. There's definitely going to be a lot more of these cases, some of them experimental. But I mean, I know there's, you know, lots of people want to do new image formats. So we might as well <laughs> address it now. But it is specific to the artifact type, right? Like this kind of goes in the conversation is, you know, what Singularity wants to do separate from the container image, and they should be separate. And this looks, in fact, we won't, I'm going to yield the time back for the artifact uh, manifest conversation uh, because there's other topics I'm not as prepared as I want to be. But the, if image spec wants to add some new capabilities, those two manifest you know, are great for image manifest and we should or index as well. And maybe we should consider adding the necessary information so that they could. We have to obviously test what the down, down level clients would do when they got some new information that they don't expect. You know, um, I think we said once, we joked once before, like there's, it's not that many clients that pretty much show up on this call. We know the person that built it so we can figure out what the right behavior should, you know, what the behavior would be on a down level client that doesn't know how to negotiate the new version. It seems like we need to make this more version proof. So we don't create a set of instability in the ecosystem. So what clients are out there right now? I mean, there's obviously the Docker client, there's container D clients, there's things like Scopio and other tools, there's what, maybe six or eight. Because remember, it's not just clients that know, that do other things with the registry, like this would not affect the Helm client. The Helm client doesn't even look at that manifest type. Um, even ORAS doesn't focus on container images. So it's it's really a smaller set of tooling, the, the historical versions of Docker, the container D versions, um, you know, IBM has some tools, obviously Red Hat, but they're all based on the same schemas. I'd, I'd be hesitant to rely on this fact as a justification for anything because, I mean, there we personally have a lot of internal tools that have behavior that you cannot look at on GitHub. Um, I, I assume other companies ha don't only use the open source tools as well. I would think that there would be a proliferation of clients based on what the uh, image spec is. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, container image runtime because uh, regardless of format, the image still has to be, you know, mounted and uh, and they centered and all of that. So wouldn't that leave room for clients to be able to translate from a specific image layout or image format? 
Well, you're you're kind of moving forward, right? You're you're kind of saying new clients will know. What we're trying to do is protect the old clients. And I think I'm just kind of asking a more fundamental thing. If if we expect to be able to innovate here, we've got to have some kind of versioning and differentiating capabilities. We can't just keep on forcing clients to guess. And if depending on how many older versions or clients to, to John's point of you know internal tools that people have, if they start breaking, then maybe that's not a bad thing if we can put in the spec, maybe part of this 1.0 spec we're trying to ship, that says what how negotiation should be handled and the ones that start breaking need to be updated. Yeah, I, I guess to me, I, I don't think it seems super important that we might be breaking old clients, in particular for innovation. This compression is kind of a special case where you can actually backwards convert from Z standard to GZIP on the fly if you want. But it's possible that somebody will derive an innovation that you can't backwards convert easily. And so if I ship a new image with this new thing that I can't backwards convert from, it will necessarily break old clients. And that, that seems okay to me. And, and, you know, just because it is possible to backwards convert from Z standard, it doesn't, I mean, I understand why uh, Docker is concerned about storage space and stuff. Um, but I don't work for Docker. We're not anymore. going to. We're not. We're not. We're not going. We're not going to convert because it's too expensive. Right. No, no, I, we're, I mean, and we. And at this point, I'm not going to ship Z standard support in Docker if it's just basically broken. Well, but to so, be fair, hold up. He's also not saying they will store both. Like we've said, storage is cheap. Yeah, we will store anything. To compute yeah. in this case, right? Store so, anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I guess the point is that one too. You still hold it out on that one, but uh, so I think the point is just that it, you can convert. Not that you would do it on the fly, but that you can convert. That, but somebody may develop an innovation where you can't convert, and we should be pre prepared for that. I guess is the point. Even for things that you can convert, because everything's in a content addressable store, there's still a problem here. And that, I mean, that's kind of yeah. my topic around schema one things. Yeah. yeah, and once we ship Notary, we're basically going to not support, we're not going to be able to well, support. Any, but, it, but people pulling by hash and things, are just like that that use case already exists. Yeah, I mean, this would break even not just, you know, our little internal clients. Any Anyone pulling by digest would be broken by any process that does any on-the-fly conversion. Don't, uh, but like you said before, index.json has the ability to store all that metadata in uh, all that information about whether a client can support a certain kind of image or not. What's wrong in put putting that information there and having the client check for it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's the only workable approach. You do have a schema version in index.json, right? There it is. There's been some debate of whether anybody's actually looking at it or can it even be changed. I mean, yeah, I mean, I I really just think that we've got, we, we know enough about the innovations in Bo is, if I'm, if I'm reading his name pronounced right, um, is kind of touching on this as well. We, we need to be able to have a versioning scheme. Otherwise we're just locked in, in you know, stone tablets. And I, I guess my claim is we are, lucky in this case because you can convert between the two formats whether you do it on the fly or not they're kind of interchangeable but someday they won't be and so like i'm thinking of if i'm you know a person who is deciding which image to ship maybe i'm just going to decide i'm only going to ship d standard images uh because you know i only want people to use new clients or whatever i mean it's a way to encourage people to upgrade Sure, you can do that. That's it's it's fine if you do that. That's not a problem. It's the fact, but it's the fact that um, 
we we you can't ship a compatible image. You're stuck at lowest common denominator, right? If you want a compatible image, you can't ship a better one alongside it for client, for new clients. So if I make my brilliant new format, I rely on everyone adopting it before they can use my images at all, which is just makes the whole ecosystem of adoption impossible. And we've always not done that. We've always made it so that people with existing clients can actually use use stuff. But but they can't, right? If if I if I have a Z standard image and somebody has an old client, there is no way for them yeah, to consume but, it. But but they they can if I if I'm if I'm allowed to make an image that supports both, then I have the choice to support old clients as well. So it's kind and, of saying, and we can leave, and then we can leave, we can leave the oldest image format of basically the standard one as the lowest common denominator. That if you you can always ship a copy of that as well, so that your things portable, and then you can ship. The newest image format with the new features for the new clients and you can ship both these at once and you probably never need to ship more than two because the ones the people in between they can use to use the old one and that's you know that's how you know that's how compatibility should work sure so i mean one of the proposals is let's just put the Z, the gzip image first in the manifest list uh, because we don't want to change versions and, you know, that kind of thing. It, but that's not, I mean, then we ha we still need to define a spec for how you recognize the Z standard image if you do support it. Otherwise, right now, no one will download the Z standard image. So we need to, def like the, the Z standard spec needs to say how you recognize that, which we just haven't done yet. Okay, but that's not a necessarily a revert of what's in there now. It's more of an addition, right? Yes, it is. It absolutely is a revert because it says now it says put them all in the in the list of layers with their media types, which is just useless. Wait, I, I, I don't understand that one. What is what is what does that mean? I mean, from my perspective, the addition that's there is fine, and that it's like we need to reserve the Z standard, the plus Z standard so that clients can actually start adding support for that layer type. Um, but from my understanding, but, but yeah, it's, it, it makes no mention of- Yeah, so the, the type's layer. fine, but it needs to say that you put one set of layers or another set of layers, not what it says now, which is you can mix up all sorts of layers. I mean, you should be able to mix them up, but there's, it's just one set of layers. It's, you can't like- yeah. Yeah, we'll exactly. The, the client yeah. the client should expect to download all the layers, which is the semantics that. Yeah, is the I mean, I, I completely agree. I was struggling a little bit on the mixed layer thing, but, but I think the spec does say that. All right, it says that right now. This was the thing that Sebastian he has his case one and case two here, and I think case like at least how I read it, that's what it says. But how does the client uh, know when it cannot support a layer without downloading all of it first? Well, it, it, I mean, it, it doesn't. It doesn't, right? I mean, that's that's what we're talking about. Is how do we how do we indicate to the client, hey, maybe you know, you should go look over here or whatever. Yeah, maybe uh, that's something that ought to be in the manifest rather than in the layer. Right. I, I guess I'm just worried. I, it, like my understanding is that's strictly additive from where we are, and what uh, Justin is saying is that it's not strictly additive. And I guess I don't understand that. Just yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. I think I think we just need to clarify it then. If it's, and maybe it's yeah. So it's basically, but but we probably want to. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I should, let me, I, I need to just read it as a, as a whole, but yeah, so it should be, as long as we clarify it and we say that, um, implement, uh, that you, that users should use manifest lists if they want to be compatible with backwards clients. Yeah, I can I can believe what we have is incomplete. I just can't it it's just not incorrect, I guess is what I'm 
So the, I, I go, I'm going to go back to the version thing. I mean, the beauty of open source is we can agree on what we should be able to change. This is not like we're trying to stuff this into some old Microsoft or old IBM fixed thing that we can't influence them to change and we're trying to use it. It's like we have this body here specifically designed to be able to bring the community forward with some sense of stability. I mean, if we want to do some experimental thing on the side so you can validate this even works, I mean, I, I know it's not rocket science, but I'm just saying, then let's do some fork branch and kind of play with it. But if we're really trying to put this into the, the core ecosystem, it seems we need to provide a way that, that has a much better sense of stability. And if they're using some client that's five years old at this point, then suck it up and get a new version. Or don't use that image. I'll say that also. Like we played this thing with multi arc manifest with, you know, maybe it's a separate repo. So if you want the new goodness, pull the new tag no. or pull from a new repo. There's two different that, concerns. No, because here, because you there's two different users concerns. Won't, like, we'll just push something and then their and their colleagues won't be able to use it and they won't know why. It'll be fucking awful. We're not. Yeah. I'm, we're yeah. literally not going to ship anything like that. So I, I don't mean to speak for Justin, but it sounds like Docker cares way more about what the clients are actually doing today. And there, so there's two orthogonal ideas here. There is changing the spec so that in the future, clients will have understood behavior so that we can actually make breaking changes and understand what the implications of those are. And then what Docker has to do right now for the hub is related to the pre-existing clients and the population of those clients, and what behavior they have. So we have to figure out what behavior they actually have, make sure there's a solution that they can use that makes sense to solve this problem now for them. Meanwhile, we can rev the spec to have new things so that this problem does not happen again. And we don't have to go and reverse engineer old clients to figure out what is like what their behavior is. We, we have a way to address this. Like other than using the evil spawn of latest, we can, uh, artifact, you know, image image publishers can publish a new tag, and it could very explicitly say, you know, Z standard. It doesn't work. What doesn't work about that, it? Uh, because again, like then everyone, like if if I update my tags to use Z standard in my, uh, you know, in my cube YAML, then then so, but my cluster hasn't up. One of my clusters hasn't updated yet. My, my entire thing doesn't work. It's That's just what testing is for totally broken. I'm not. I, I'm just like we need to just, be able to find some it's way. It's so synchronous. We're 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 seriously just considering whether we can drop V1 support. Like this is, we can't just say yeah we're just going to allow people to push stuff that doesn't work with most clients. Like this, the whole design of the OCI was is was to make things compatible with actual practice and not to say, oh, it'd be nice if uh, we could just break everything for people if they push stuff. That, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we break I'm, I'm them gonna... arbitrarily. Like we give them a ability to choose between A and B moving forward. And you, you can't like... choose unless you're fully in control of every everything in your entire tool chain in a distributed system that involves lots of different people who are not you. It's not, it doesn't work like that in reality. In reality, you get images from other people and you send them to servers that belong to other people and you can't control which things have been updated at exactly which time on these things. It just doesn't work like that. But this is part of the conversation we've been having of having control of your supply chain. Like you shouldn't be grabbing, grabbing random shit from the internet and expecting it to work. It's, it's not random shit, it's just like you should, Telling people you can only there. grab things from people who have updated their clients to this version is not how you build a distributed system. It's not how we do, it's not how we, it's simply not how like any distributed system works. So uh, we are uh, like 15 minutes towards the top of the hour. Maybe we can move this uh, to the mailing list or next week. Well, we should figure out what we need to do to make some next clips because it sounds like this is checked in in a halfway and that, that's the concern that got raised. So what so, do we want to do to close for the next steps is the, is the kind of the question. So it sounds like uh, there is um, 
request, Justin had uh, requested for the spec to say that uh, uh, folks should uh, implement the manifest list in order to be backwards compatible. Which is not, which is currently not defined and doesn't yeah. work, but yes. So that's one. And the second thing is a versioning schema. I mean, look, I, I think we all agree we want to be able to have new innovations. That, and whether it, it was lots of different ones that we're trying to do. I think we oh, need well, to figure out what the versioning scheme is. And maybe we have a meeting, breakout, whatever you want to do it on that conversation. And if there's a forked branch that supports this, you know, this experiment, then great. But it's like that there's a concern of it currently checked into a, an area that doesn't have the stability it's needed. Okay. Does that represent what you're just trying to get to, Justin? Yeah. So I, I was only looking at just before the meeting. Is there a, a, a merger that we need to roll back? Is that until we can resolve this? I don't think so. At least from what I understand. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think it, there, it needs more work in order for people to consume it, like at the Docker registry level. But I don't think anything that's in there now is incorrect. Well, incomplete might be a variation of incorrect. And, and, I, and I don't really know. That's why I'm asking. It, well, it's, it's apparently in. I couldn't suppose it's in master, but not in a release yet. So we can finish it before we do a release. Is that a concern with whatever the next schedule releases? Should it be moved to a, a, a pre-release branch or, or some sort? Or otherwise it should otherwise it should be moved into another branch. I I, I regard it as unfinished and um I and I I, I would recommend that people who've implemented marketers not to be used and I'm so it sounds like you and Tycho have the are kind of representing the two sides I'm just trying to facilitate where, where do we want to land it, it, Tycho does it oh, well hurt you if there's a branch that you can pull from to keep your work going forward but doesn't disrupt the master main no I we can as far as I'm concerned we can revert it the only thing I care about is uh, uh that mine types that aren't explicitly in that list stay working in various tools um, because I'm actually not using Z standard either. I'm using SquashFest. So I just see this as a parallel discussion to what I've, what I've done that has broken before. So. So Justin, does that solve what you're Yeah, that, I mean, that's fine. I think that, I think it, the, it's correct that there should be different MIME types there and the layers should be like we should support layers in different MIME types, but you should never get you should never get to an image which then has some MIME types you don't understand because you should have never pulled that image unless it was not a manifest list and under controlled circumstances where that was fine. But in general, we should not have the situation where like there's stuff floating around that people download and then explode, and, you know, the kind of explode. No, that's right. It goes back to the stability it. question. So it's kind of like there needs to be a pivot and a versioning scheme to understand how to do this pivot. And I think there's, it's not just you, Tycho, that's trying to get this. I think there's a general desire. So I, I don't think they'll be trying to, how do we solve versioning for this one feature? It's how do we solve versioning? And this will be maybe the first feature that uses it. Yeah, I mean, because Tycho, I mean, Tycho, I mean, Tycho, again, will need it if anyone wants to make a squash FS an image that's compatible with all clients is the same problem. I mean, they, for, for experimental things, that might not be, any, that's not obviously not an issue. Yeah, we're, we're not using any of the Docker runtime or anything. So we don't have a compatibility issues, obviously, because the Docker runtime can't consume squash of us. So it's not a huge issue for but, me personally, but I can absolutely understand how it would be for you. 
it is um yeah i mean so in your case you could just have a, your own totally different media type and uh, for the right for the image or something instead but it but it, but, I, but it's if it's a layer type format it makes sense to reuse it to me yeah okay well, we're getting we're getting back to the details can we just can we agree to move this to a roll this back move it to a branch and then finish the versioning work i think is the i'm trying to get some closure to move on to the other items that we have there sure yeah, i guess i have no desire to have it be in this the z standard to be in the spec so I'm not volunteering for that. <laughs> is all. Is all I'm <laughs> okay. So who owns the next step to to do that? Is that Justin? Is that you? Is that Tyco? I don't know. I can do it. Do you hear some LGTMs that would do that, or are we going to have a? Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Um, like I said, I, I moved mine to our next meeting. We'll talk about when next meetings are. So who was next after I pulled that out? Uh, content, the, the NIDA stuff. So I don't know if you, 11 minutes will do you justice, but it's yours to use. Pang? Lee, that's that's up to you. Oh, okay. I thought it was content negotiation from John. Okay. Oh no, that, uh, that was this right? That was this conversation we just had. Am I? Uh, I I would like to ask some. I mean, I filed an issue against the Docker roadmap that I haven't heard back from, and I don't want to just harass like Justin and to poke in people, but that's essentially what I'm here for. Um, I, it's it ties into the previous conversation pretty closely though, so I, I, we can table it for now. Well, it was on the list, and I think we got carried over from last week. So let's, it, no offense. I, it, I, I mean, whatever decisions we make, I think should take the historical context of like the schema one stuff has made a lot of things difficult and anything we do right now is going to run into the same problems. Let's not repeat the mistake. So is the action item to work on a versioning scheme solve that problem? I actually didn't look at that issue. So uh, perhaps, I mean, so Josh opened a PR that seems like a decent thing to do for now. Um, and I, had, I don't know if I would like schema one to go away before we start talking about schema three. Well, does it go away by the fact that the other ones are better and people stop pulling schema one? I mean, uh, it goes away naturally because very few clients exist that are pushing. And I think the only clients that are pulling are doing so by accident because of distributed systems. Uh, and this is just a matter of registries or clients stopping support for it, and it, that'll just go away, I think. I, I did find someone running a 2014 Docker pulling actual modern images the other day, but. Wow. It was, it was at a large telco vendor. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I'm happy to. See some, I mean, at some point, at some point, I'm happy to break them. I mean, I, I'm going to look at in detail about exactly how many there are, but like at some point, we have to break those because it's. Are those not... numbers something that Docker would be willing to share with the standards body so that we can have an understanding of compatibility in the wild? Yeah, sure. I'll have to work out exactly which version of Docker switched to. Supposing it, uh, but I can, yeah, I can share those numbers. Okay, so, so I mean, I've got a bunch of sample samples from the logs, basically. Yeah, I'm satisfied. I can just ping some issues, um, and we can continue it there. Yeah, sampling logs is fine. That's what we used to do for a quay, at least. So good enough. You don't have to query everything. Yeah, and I've seen Docker Hub has the worst case of all clans, worse than any other registry, I imagine. Yep, I would assume that as well. Yep. Okay, sorry, John, I didn't mean to skip you. I just assumed that was part of the previous conversation. So, um, 
Peng Lee, that's back to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, in the last week meeting, we have talked about um, how NIDAS user space file system is designed to um, meet the requirements like uh, on-demand fetch, uh, more efficient to in terms of storage and transmission and some security related stuff like a CVE and CWE scan. And uh, here uh, I'd like to continue this topic with the design of um, NIDAS manifest, which we have covered a little bit before. I'm going to uh, share my screen a little bit. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, uh, uh, John has mentioned this, um, abused uh, thing. So we have uh, to, to support NIDAS uh, uh, to be compatible with the current OCI v1 uh, registry uh, spec. Uh, we have add, uh, we have abused uh, uh, the platform and uh, for image index file, we added another uh, record for uh, a new manifest uh, which contains a platform uh, and uh, OS feature annotation uh, referring, this is um, a NIDAS uh, manifest. And uh, we added a, an extra manifest file uh, to representing, you know, uh, NIDAS metadata layer and data layer. Uh, and uh, data layer is stored in a binary format, and the metadata layer is stored uh, as the original OCI v1 tar GZ format. And so, uh, uh, of course, we need to um, we need a new for container D cases, which we are using, uh, we have come up with a new NIDAS snapshotter, which can recognize this um, new abuse uh, annotations. So uh, for our uh, internally use usage, um, the, the client will look for this new annotation. And uh, for uh, the old client, which are not uh, going to know this, uh, they were just uh, look, looking for the old OC everyone image. And that's how we do it um, in a compatible way. Um, and besides that, um, uh, so uh, our, okay. So our um, NIDAS image support a direct mode, which uh, uh, for, for image, which has several instances uh, within a, a one local nodes, um, uh, we will just um, uh, use MMAP method to and map this uh, metadata layer into memory uh, instead of cache everything uh, about the file system metadata so that we can save a lot of metadata, uh, save a lot of memory space. And, uh, and another case I want to mention is that uh, we also support um, different storage backend for the both uh, bootstrap and uh, I mean the metadata and the data uh, because we have a scenario that uh, uh, we can store two things, uh, sorry. Uh, we can switch on the fly. We can switch the bootstrap and blob file access point from two different storage backend. Uh, let's see, we have a, uh, we have a NAS, uh, which is fast, but it requires the network. So, um, and the other storage backend is star uh, object storage, which has a higher bandwidth, but um, uh, when you do on-demand load, it's quite slow than NAS. So uh, we can start the container first with NAS bootstrap. Uh, and then uh, uh, in the meanwhile, we will download the uh, bootstrap from, uh, download the, the, the data layer from the object storage. And then when that is done, uh, we're going to switch from NAS access point to the uh, local storage. And uh, uh, you know this is to avoid the uh, potential network disconnection, and uh, that's one of the feature we have done in NIDAS. And uh, in our next plan is to uh, come up with a native kernel Linux kernel file system to support NIDAS within kernel. Um, yeah, so the time is limited. So if you've got any questions, I can answer right now. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's cool. I just want timing to present probably just 
make sure you get early in the list. Uh, yes. <laughs> we have enough time to, to cover everything because um, it, it's definitely cool. Um, it, there's about a bunch of stuff around that. that it, it goes back to the previous conversations. We want to do a lot more innovations here. Mm -hmm. Did I understand correctly that uh, you uh, query uh, a, a bootstrap image while at the same time downloading the data blocks or metadata? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, let me specify a little bit more. Um, uh, so for foot for content uh, for starting a container, we need to first download the Bootstrap part uh, to local uh, file system uh, because that way we can start container with all the metadata information. And uh, in the meantime, we will download the data part, which is a blob file from uh, object storage, which has a higher bandwidth than NAS. And and before that, before that downloading complete. Uh, we would just uh, use the NAS blob file. Uh, you know, uh, we just uh, mount NAS from the NFS version and then use it directly. And when the download is, uh, you know, is done, and then we can switch that on the fly. What does the Bootstrap uh, blob have? Yeah, a Bootstrap refers to the metadata part, uh, which, which contains all our uh, user space file system information. And then uh, the blob file contains the data part, which is uh, in a binary format. And we just uh, split the file data into chunks and store it uh, contiguously in a single binary file. And we also support the layers. So if we build, um, uh, like uh, we convert from the traditional OSI v1 image to uh, Natus image, we can do the uh, we can do the data part uh, layer by layer. That's interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I recall that Helm also has some method of uh, bootstrapping for installation anyway, not necessarily for the mm -hmm. container runtimes. I think you're talking about the CNAP stuff to install Helm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a different, it, it's kind of a different thing. Basically, they have this console of an invocation image that has your runtime environment to do tooling. It also includes the thing you're trying to deploy, which has some challenges, but. So I'm just for the sake of time, because we want to, we always try to respect people's schedules for other meetings. Um, I'm up for folks. I do, we're getting to the end of the year, wrapping things up. Some people want to continue working. Um, do folks want to have a meeting next week and then cancel the Christmas and um, New Year's week? So we set proper expectations or do people want to keep meeting and there's recordings for people that want to take time off? I'm around next week, but I won't be around until New Year after that. Yeah, I think I, the the last two of the year definitely like no one no one should go to meetings for those two weeks. <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure <laughs> if anyone should go to meetings next week either. I, I'm but I take it off next apparently week. I was so, thinking of taking off next week, but I've, I think I've already got some meetings. But I might just mostly take it off. Just so you didn't off. move fast enough. That was really your problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I should, should, should have just written. Not no meetings week. <laughs> so here's what I'll here's what I'll do, and we can change. I'll, I'll put next week leave it open, and people want to put an agenda. I'll leave it open for what people do. I'm I'm not going to submit mine, and then I'll just post the week of 23rd and 30th. If I got, yeah, 23rd and 30th as no meeting, with the following meeting on the 6th of January. So if anybody wants to queue up for next week, we will have a recording and. Uh, we're going to let Amy take vacation, so the recording will eventually get posted. And uh, from there, we'll quickly, as soon as possible, to get to 2021 and put this shit behind us. So you're here to that. Anyway, thanks, everyone.